friends and be vegan with a cat? Today, nut cheese time. Where I prepare these famous nut cheeses. I have two prepared already. I showed you a minute before. To be precise, 48 hours before. And uh, what, I, what, I, what I've done is, this one of these, remember, I put two of these constructions into my, in a warm place at room temperature. That's um, to make the cheeses inside, under these heavy weights, um, lose their water so they could ferment with the bacteria. And um, one is the macadamia cheese and one is the cashew cheese. And uh, here I have uh, four molds, two rings and two octagons, uh, to give them a shape. And uh, the cashew cheese will go into my dehydrator. First I freeze it and then I um, make it a rind, give it a rind by dehydrating. So it will be a little bit firm. And um, macadamia cheese, I will um, make a kind of um, pesto cheese. So I have a layered cheese with um, three layers, two layers of cheese and one layer of pesto. First I will prepare this pesto. It's a basil pesto in my basil. Pesto, pesto as, um, as I do it as a vegan, I uh, use, uh, this time I use basil, it's a classical, you can do any kind of herbs in a pesto. First I cut my basil and I wash it quickly, just under running water. Shake it a little bit, you can hear, that's enough. And then I'll cut it. Also, I use the stems and everything, I, I press it small, so it's easier to cut. Run my, run my knife through it, like a cradle, you know, these cradle-like movements. It's very easy for the knife. It goes almost on its own. It's a heavy knife, a heavy chef knife, and you can um, pretty effortlessly work with these big knives. Their weight and their sharpness, they do the job. You just need to be a little bit make it easier. You don't even need to cut them. You put them, put them in the food processor as whole leaves, fit it with the S blade, with a black blade. And uh, the other, the second classic ingredient for pesto is of pine nuts and they are really are very good in combination with the basil and my pine nuts I stored them in a large container glass glass and because I find a, a trader who give me very inexpensive ones from Persia Iran but the woman has a nice shop in Berlin very small shop just for the Iranese people. They only buy there. It's their home, so to say. And uh, it's good to find these shops because among themselves they have special prices and uh, they have a very wonderful quality of the, of the food. They import it directly and um, every country has a specialties and these countries, these Iran and so they have a wonderful pine nuts uh, and um, and um, herbs and and so so dates they have the best dates ever and nobody knows that but if you go to these shops and find these shops and you find the best um, the best ingredients 
for example, this that I couldn't afford all these pine nuts because um, they are so expensive. But this lady, I'm so grateful for that for her, and she always gives me a little reduction because she knows that uh, I'm a chef and I do the little videos and so and she loves me. And yeah, that's uh, nice. So pine nuts and uh, basil, first ingredient, main ingredient, a little bit garlic, no pesto in the garlic, yeah, that's nice. So I take a a loaf, clove of garlic. Ah, just uh, cut a little bit alongside and crosswise and uh, just some smaller pieces. That will do. And uh, yeah, pepper and salt. Of course, we just need uh, a little, uh, a half a teaspoon of salt. Not too much. I mean the, the garlic and the, the basil and the, the, the pine nuts, they are so, uh, they have a nice character. You don't need that much salt, just a little bit, to give it a little pinch. And we also need a little bit of black pepper. Oops. Black pepper. I have my tully cherry pepper again, you know, my favorite one, tully cherry. Peppercorns from Africa, from Ghana. I put some here in my grinder, my mortar. Same story, it doesn't need that much, it doesn't need to be that much. It's nice to be directly grind it fresh and fold that taste. It's much better and the ingredients and the pepper that makes it so healthy, the piperine. allows the body to take in so many more um, nutrients. Yeah. Piperine is a wonderful, but you have to pay, be careful because piperine is always uh, very fragile and if you cook it, for example, if you put the pepper too early into the water and the cooking in the food, it will destroy, be destroyed and become ineffective. So pepper always put, if you cook, pepper uh, should be put into later, very late at the end. Uh, I have a lemon. I roll it. And I need, so I will need some more lemon for the cheese because when the uh, the cheese uh, char starts to starts to ferment, um, it goes for some days or one day, it depends on the kind of cheese you make. Next time I will show you cheese that only takes uh, 24 hours to ferment. It's a different kind of cheese, delicious one, more fresh like. Um, then you would have to stop the process of fermentation and you use salt and lemon for that. After the fermentation process you put lemon and salt into the cheese. And then this process will stop and um, then it can begin to ripen. Prepare some in advance, so this uh, in a couple of minutes, the pesto is done. I will get to my cheese. Saves me so much time, and it's so wonderful, and it's so expensive, inexpensive, and it really uh, it is unbreakable almost. It's a nice tool. You find a good one, some of these uh, citrus presses, they don't work that well because they are difficult to cleanse, and the juice won't go through, and there's no container here under to keep the juice in while before it's uh, flowing through into your um, container. Finally, so get a good one. And um, this makes you very happy in the kitchen. Cool, this is my lemon juice. Okay, put that lemon juice maybe uh, just a half a 
tablespoon into the pesto tube. So it's all in now. And begin the process. It's not whole food. I prefer whole food. It's very important for the health. But for the pesto, of course, it's classic. You need some um, oil. And I have a, a friend of mine in Vienna. He's a, a Trioga studio too in Vienna. Trioga Center also. That's um, Peter. He has another friend and he makes the olive oil himself on his garden in Austria. And he gave me the bottle of this wonderful olive oil. So, um, I think of them a lot if I use it. Very sparingly, of course, very thrifty because it's so precious, and um, I use it on um, special occasions and uh, yeah, for pesto, for example. Pesto is very nice with the olive oil. So, you will see the pesto. In a second, okay, should be a little bit chunky. It's nice. Pesto is very easy to make and really delicious. <coughs> the herbs and the nuts. Very nice. Okay, I can leave it in here. It will go directly into the cheese from there. And um, now uh, you will see the cheese. First, cheese take all the my weight off just to show you the whole process see this is some the colander from the the water was dripping here two for two days or two nights what came out of this this is the water what came out of the cheese see a little bit this is completely fermented water, fermentation water, and it's super healthy. It makes your intestine the best um, environment there for the bacteria, bacteria. So I won't throw that away. I put it in a glass and I will drink it later. This looks a bit strange, but yeah, who cares? It's like a medicine. Very valuable. So, you remember I put the, the plate, the type B fitting, for the cheese shouldn't be, they would be pressed down at the same time and should not be allowed to come, uh, to be squeezed out of the sides. So it should be all in there, to be pressed and firm. So, <coughs> and <coughs> this is the, the cloth, the textile. I take it up and under it, there is the cheese. See, what look like, looks like after 48 hours. And um, into this, I put my cheese in there. 
can easily take it out. Now my spoon is ready. Where's my spoon? Spoon is ready. To spoon it out. Now, it's pretty easy. So it's, it will be falling out of the textile like this. I scrape it out of the, out of the cloth. Close. of course. To make sure that I got the right cheese because the other one was the macadamia, uh, the cashew and the macadamia. I won't really mix it up, so I quickly have a look at the other cheese, the other one, uh, to make sure which is which. It's the same container, kind of container, two big bottles. Third one already fell down, they're so heavy and yeah. And uh, here's my cheese, my cheese under this glass, under this plate, under this cloth. Here, this is the other one I'll show you in a moment. See, other one, raw cheese. Let's see. I'll put it in another container. Put it on this plate. It can be worked with on this plate. Very easy to get it out like this. This one is easier. See, it's a different one. So that was very easy. And I will only have to scrape a little bit. So I guess this is the macadamia cheese I was looking for. The other one is a little bit more creamy. Yeah, the creamy one. The creamy one is the will be the cashew cheese and the firmer one. See the one, this will be the macadamia one. I'll try it and then be sure in a second. Sure macadamia, definitely cashew. Yeah, you see, this is the first, the first uh, difference between the cashew cheese and the macadamia cheese. It's very obvious. The cashew cheese is very creamy. Wow. Where the macadamia cheese is drier. So you can, um, Work directly with this cheese. I will firstly I will put some lemon juice in it into it. Again, I need uh, my little spoon. One, two, three. Tables are teaspoons of lemon juice and a little bit of salt, maybe a quarter teaspoon. So this will allow my fermentation process to stop. And now I mix it. That's all I have to do. 
So you see, it's pretty easy. And I brought it to a friend of mine who is a big cheese fan. He's not vegan. He's learning about it. Very slowly, he adapts, but he, he knows all kinds of cheeses. And, um, and I brought him this up. Uh, first time I brought him a cheese, not cheese, he tried, tried it, and he and his wife, and they said, um, Well, this is not a cheese. I would say this is a, a mousse, a paste I could can buy in the supermarket to cream, to put on the, on, on the bread. So I went back home and said, Okay, they know something about tea, cheese, and they are definitely right. This was not right cheese. And then I found these kind of recipes with fermentation. And next time I went there, I had already some experience, and I lived in another, another city in Germany, south. I brought in this one of this kind of cheese, fermented and ripened and so on. And they're completely uh, amazed and said, yes, that's cheese now, you're convinced me. And now they're looking forward to the next time I see them in a couple of weeks and I bring another one and they will be uh, very happy to have these guys there having my cheese. So I use a plate now for uh, these two um, molds. And um, I put my, my cheese, the first part of my cheese, uh, I need a spoon again. This will do. Uh, the first layer will be macadamia cheese, cheese, and the second layer will be pesto. So I can tell it must be the half, half of this little heap of cheese, raw cheese mass. I need half of it, and the other half will come on top of the base of pesto. I press it down pretty firmly, so then it will shape exactly like an octagon. Oh, hexagon. He hexagon. There's only one, two, three, four, five, six. So, hexagon, not octagon. I have to correct myself. And it's two inches. So, my pesto is here. in a little bit, a second layer, Of course you can make all kinds of cheeses and all kinds of um, um, pâtés and with the cheese and uh, so different kind of pesto. This is just a very basic recipe as you saw it was just for um, the very simplest form of, of um, 
basil pesto with basil pine nuts and the garlic and the lemon, the pepper, salt, that's all. So, I will show you what it looks like. Now it, has, it, is in, it, is, it is in shape. I can take off the molds. And you will see the nice, light-shaped pesto macadamia cheese. Oops. That's how it looks. It looks like isn't that nice? This will go in the fridge for let's say a day or two and will ripen and then you can keep it for some time. Maybe some weeks, two weeks or so easily. In the fridge of course. And um, everybody will greatly enjoy, I promise. So this is my first strike. The second one is uh, the, will be the cashew cheese. It's a little different. I bring that into the fridge and we make it back in a sec. The second one is a little different. As you know, as you already have seen, um, this is a little bit more liquid. First, I need to do the same procedure. I put some um, lemon in it, into it. One, two, three. I need one more. And some salt. That is the same. Always. Yeah, a quarter. And then I stir it. and cream cashew cheese. And I put that into my molds, my real molds, this time, just to make a difference. It doesn't really matter what kinds of shape you give your cheese. Or maybe, maybe it won't matter. Who knows? Maybe yeah. There is a relation between the shape of the mold or the shape of the cheese you give it and its taste, its texture. Because of course there's a difference between macadamia and um, cashew. And uh, maybe somehow this reflects in its shape. I don't know. Mysterious. Mysterious. But this is what I have to do now. That is all. And the rest for the rest I will I will put it in the freezer huh? for two hours. Freeze it. And um, then I can take it out of the mold. It is firm. 
I would to, uh, put the mold, take out the mold now, it would run out and it would be, uh, be an all mess. And so I put it in the freezer, it's firm, take out the mold, off the mold and um, put it into the dehydrator. And then it will get a, a firm uh, crust, a, ri gri a rind, a rind. Yeah? And then, um, yeah, it's a different kind of cheese that I will see later, I will show you a little photo. That's the cheese for today, and I hope I see you very soon.